Hi there, and welcome. In this episode of the Urantia series, we will read from papers 6 through 9, The Eternal Son and the Infinite Spirit. The Eternal Son is the spiritual personalization of the Paradise Father's universal and infinite concept of divine reality, unqualified spirit, and absolute personality. The Son is derived from the Father, while also coordinately eternal with the Father. The Eternal Son is the spiritual center and divine administrator of the spiritual government of the universe of universes. The Universal Father is the creator and then a controller. The Son is first a co-creator and then a spiritual administrator. The Eternal Son is known by different names in various universes. In the Central Universe, he is known as the Coordinate Source, the Co-Creator, and the Associate Absolute. On Uversa, the headquarters of the Super Universe, we designate the Sun as the Coordinate Spirit Center and as the Eternal Spirit Administrator. On Salvington, the headquarters of our local universe, the Sun is of record as the second Eternal Source and Center. In our world, this original Sun has been confused with a coordinate creator son, Michael of Nevadon, who we know as Jesus, who bestowed himself upon the mortal races of Urantia. This eternal son and the creator son are different entities. The eternal son is the eternal word of God, who is holy like the Father. When we worship the universal Father, at the same time we worship God the Son and God the Spirit. The Son shares the Father's perfection and jointly shares the responsibility of aiding all creatures of imperfection in their spiritual efforts to attain divine perfection. The Son shares the justice and righteousness of the Trinity, but overshadows these divinity traits by the infinite personalization of Father's love and mercy. As God is love, the Son is mercy. The ministry of the Eternal Son is devoted to the revelation of the God of love to universe of universes. As love is comprehended on a sex planet, the love of God is like the love of a father, while the love of the Eternal Son is more like the affection of a mother. The Son is only omnipotent in the spiritual realm. In the eternal economy of universe administration, wasteful and needless repetition of function is never encountered. The deities are not given to useless duplication of universe ministry. When we conceive of the Father's universal presence, we find it difficult to differentiate in our thinking from the spiritual presence of the Eternal Son. The Spirit of the Father is eternally resident in the Spirit of the Son. The Father and the Son know the number and whereabouts of all spirits and spiritualized beings in the universe of universes. The Eternal Son does not personally function in the physical domains, nor does he function, except through the conjoint actor, in the levels of mind ministry to creature beings. But these qualifications do not in any manner otherwise limit the Eternal Son in the full and free exercise of all the divine attributes of spiritual omnipresence, omnipotence, and omniscience. The Eternal Son transmits creatorship powers only to the first or direct personalization. Therefore, when the Father and the Son unite to personalize a Creator Son, they achieve their purpose. But the Creator Son, thus brought into existence, is never able to transmit or delegate the prerogatives of creatorship to the various orders of sons which he may subsequently create. The Eternal Son is spirit and has mind, but not a mind or a spirit which mortal mind can comprehend. Mortal man perceives mind on the finite, cosmic, material, and personal levels. Man also observes mind phenomena in living organisms functioning on the subpersonal or animal level, but it is difficult for him to grasp the nature of mind when associated with supernatural beings and as a part of exclusive spirit personalities. The equivalent of mind, the ability to know and be known, is indigenous to deity. Deity may be personal, pre-personal, superpersonal, or impersonal. But deity is never mindless, that is, never without the ability at least to communicate with similar entities, beings, or personalities. The Eternal Son is that infinite personality from whose unqualified personality fetters, the Universal Father, escaped by the technique of trinitization, 
and by virtue of which he has ever continued to bestow himself in endless profusion upon his ever-expanding universe of creators and creatures. The Son is absolute personality. God is the Father personality, which is the source, the bestower, and the cause. Concerning identity, nature, and other attributes of personality, the Eternal Son is the full equal, the perfect complement, and the eternal counterpart of the Universal Father. In the same sense that God is the Universal Father, the Son is the Universal Mother, and all of us, high and low, constitute their Universal Family. Throughout your local universe, experience the Creator Son, whose personality is comprehensible by man, must compensate for your inability to grasp the full significance of the more exclusively spiritual, but nonetheless personal, Eternal Son of Paradise. As you progress through Orvantan and Havana, as you leave behind you the vivid picture and deep memories of the Creator Son of your local universe, the passing of this material and Marancha experience will be compensated by ever enlarging concepts and intensifying comprehension of the Eternal Son of Paradise, whose reality and nearness will ever augment as you progress towards Paradise. The original Son is ever concerned with the execution of the spiritual aspects of the Father's eternal purpose as it progressively unfolds in the phenomena of evolving universes with their manifold groups of living beings. The Eternal Son is the actual upholder of the vast creation of spirit realities and spiritual beings. The spirit world is the habit, the personal conduct of the Son and the impersonal realities of spirit nature are always responsive to the will and purpose of the Eternal Son. The Eternal Son holds all spirit realities and all spiritualized values. The control of the universal spiritual gravity is universal spiritual sovereignty. This gravity control of spiritual things operates independently of time and space. Therefore, spirit energy is undiminished in transmission. Spirit gravity never suffers time delays, nor does it undergo space diminishment. Transcendence of time and space by pure spirit energies is inherent to the absoluteness of the sun. It is not due to the interposition of the anti-gravity forces of the third source and center. The sun's spiritual drawing power is inherent to a lesser degree in many paradise orders of sonship. For there do exist within absolute spirit gravity circuits those local systems of spiritual attraction that function in the lesser units of creation. Spirit gravity pull and response thereto operate not only on the universe as a whole, but also even between individuals and groups of individuals. There is a spiritual cohesiveness among the spiritual and spiritized personalities of any world, race, nation, or believing group of individuals. All reactions of the spirit gravity circuit of the grand universe are predictable. We recognize all actions and reactions of the omnipresent spirit of the eternal sun and find them to be dependable. In the central universe, the personality activity of the original sun is discernible in the exquisite spiritual harmony of the eternal creation. Havana is so marvelously perfect that the spiritual status and the energy states of this pattern universe are in perfect and perpetual balance. In the super universes, the sun is not personally present or resident. In this creation, he maintains only a super personal representation. These spirit manifestations of the sun are not personal. They are not in the personality circuit of the universal father. We know of no better term to use than to designate them as super personalities. They are finite being. They are neither absolute or absolute. The spiritual gravity pull of the eternal sun constitutes the inherent secret of the paradise ascension of surviving human souls. All genuine spirit values on all bona fide spiritualized individuals are held within the unfailing grasp of spiritual gravity of the eternal sun. The mortal mind, for example, initiates its career as a material mechanism and is eventually mustered into the core of the finality as a well-nigh perfected spirit existence, becoming progressively less subject to material gravity and correspondingly more responsive to the inward pulling urge of spirit gravity during this entire experience. 
the divine plan of perfection attainment embraces three unique enterprises of universal adventure. 1. The plan of progressive attainment. This is the Universal Father's plan of evolutionary ascension, a program unreservedly accepted by the Eternal Son when he concurred in the Father's proposal, let us make mortal creatures in our own image. 2. The Bestowal Plan. This is the proposal of the Eternal Son and consists of his bestowal of the sons of God upon the evolutionary creations, there to personalize and factualize, to incarnate and make real, the love of the Father and the mercy of the Son to the creatures and universes. 3. The Plan of Mercy Ministry When the attainment plan and the bestowal plan had been formulated and proclaimed, alone and of himself, the Infinite Spirit projected and put in operation the tremendous and universal enterprise of mercy ministry. The Eternal Son, without reservation, joined the Universal Father in broadcasting that tremendous injunction to all creation, be perfect as your Father in Havona is perfect. And ever since, that invitation command has motivated all survival plans and the bestowal projects of the Eternal Son and his vast family of coordinate and associated sons. The Eternal Son cannot contact directly with human beings as does the Father through the gift of the pre-personal thought adjusters. But the Eternal Son does draw near to created personalities by a series of downstepping gradations of divine sonship until he is enabled to stand in man's presence and at times as man himself. The lack of knowledge of the multiple sons of God is a source of great confusion on Urantia, and this ignorance persists in the face of such statements as the record of a conclave of these divine personalities. The Creator Sons go out from Paradise into the universes of time, and with cooperation of the controlling and creative agencies of the Third Source and Center, complete the organization of local universes of progressive evolution. Much as the Creator Sons are personalized by the Father and the Son, so are the Magisterial Sons personalized by the Son and Spirit. These are the Sons who, in the experiences of creation incarnation, earn the right to serve as the judges of survival in the creations of time and space. The Father, Son, and Spirit also unite to personalize the versatile Trinity Teacher Sons, who range the grand universe as the supernatural teachers of all personalities, both human and divine. There are numerous other orders of Paradise Sonship that have not been brought to the attention of your ranch immortals. In all these widespread activities of the far-flung spiritual administration of the Eternal Son, do not forget that the Son is a person just as truly and actually as the Father is a person. Indeed, to beings of the one-time human order, the Eternal Son will be more easy to approach than the Universal Father. In the progress of the pilgrims of time through the circuits of Havona, you will be competent to attain the Son long before you are prepared to discern the Father. More of the character and merciful nature of the Eternal Son of Mercy you should comprehend as you meditate on the revelation of these divine attributes which was made in loving service by your own Creator Son, the one-time Son of Man on Earth, now the exalted Sovereign of your local universe, the Son of Man and the Son of God. In the dawn of eternity, both the Father and the Son become infinitely cognizant of their mutual interdependence, their eternal and absolute oneness, and therefore they enter into an infinite and everlasting covenant of divine partnership. This never-ending compact is made for the execution of their unified concepts throughout all of the circle of eternity. And ever since this eternity event, the Father and Son continue with this divine union. The first act of the infinite spirit is the inspection and recognition of his divine parents, the Father Father and the Mother Son. He, the Spirit, unqualifiedly identifies both of them. He is fully cognizant of their separate personalities and infinite attributes, as well as their combined nature and unified function. Next, the voluntary, with transcendent willingness and inspiring spontaneity, the third person of deity, notwithstanding his equality with the first and second persons, pledges eternal loyalty to God the Father and acknowledges everlasting dependence upon God the Son. In brief, the infinite spirit testifies that since he is eternal, so also is the central universe eternal. And this is the traditional starting point of the history of the universe of universes. The third source and center is known by numerous titles, the universal spirit, 
the supreme guide, the conjoint creator, the divine executive, the absolute intelligence, and so on. On Urantia, he is sometimes confused with the cosmic mind. The conjoint creator inherits all the father's beauty of thought and character of truth, and these sublime traits of divinity are coordinated in the near supreme levels of the cosmic mind in subordination to the infinite and eternal wisdom of the unconditioned and limitless mind of the third source and center. The eternal son and conjoint creator have, as partners through their coordinate personalities, planned and fashioned every post Havona which has been brought into existence. The spirit sustains the same personal relation to the son in all subsequent creation and that the son sustains the father in the first and central creation. The eternal son is the only avenue of approach to the universal father and the infinite spirit is the only means of attaining the eternal son. On Urantia, the infinite spirit is known as the omnipresent influence, a universal presence, but in Havona you will know him as the personal presence of actual ministry. In this divine universe, the infinite spirit fully participated in the seven transcendental appearances of the eternal son. Likewise did he participate with the original Michael son in the seven bestowals upon the circuits of Havona, thereby becoming the sympathetic and understanding spirit minister to every pilgrim of time traversing these perfect circles on high. There are many spiritual influences, and they are all as one. Even the work of the thought adjusters, though independent of all other influences, unvaryingly coincides with the spirit ministry of the combined influences of the infinite spirit and local universe mother spirit. In administration of universes, the father, the son, and spirit are perfectly and eternally interassociated. Though each is engaged in a personal ministry to all creation, all three are divinely and absolutely interlocked in a service of creation and control, which forever makes them one. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Urantia. If you enjoyed this content, giving a thumbs up on the video will help the channel gauge its level of interest to the audience. Thank you for your time, and remember, as always, you are heard, seen, and loved. Peace.